2 Timothy chapter number 3. There's a lot of preaching in this chapter, and we from time to time spend a lot of time in the first part of this chapter, but I want to pick up reading verse number 8. The Bible says, Now Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. So do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifested unto all men as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What per persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Uh, we thank you for truth. We thank you for righteousness. We thank you for holiness. We thank you, Lord, for your church and your people where we can come out from among the world and assemble together and draw strength, find encouragement, find a friend, find help, find love, find acceptance. Lord, we're thankful we have all that because of you, and we found those things in you. Now, Father, I pray again for little Caleb. I pray you'd help him. Lord, touch his body. Father, I pray for those that are working with the children on the other side. Lord, uh, many hours a week they spend in front of televisions and on telephones and in front of game systems and being infiltrated with a lot of things. Lord, uh, we don't have much time to work with them here in the church, but what they're getting back there tonight, may it be deeply rooted in their hearts. May it help them and sustain them and build a foundation for their lives that will help them to overcome, Lord, anything this life will throw at them. I pray for our teens as well, the peer pressure that they face, and God, all the attack that comes against them. Lord, I pray that as they are being taught the scriptures tonight, Lord, they too will find strength and they'll be insulated from the perils of this world by the truths of the Word of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. Lord, I pray that you would lift our spirits. I pray that you would encourage our hearts. You would edify your people. And I pray that we truly would leave forth from this place rejoicing in the goodness of the Lord. Help us now tonight. Use this unworthy vessel. Fill us with thy power and thy presence and thy spirit. And God will thank you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful, holy, and lovely name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things out of these verses. I want you to notice, first of all, that the great apostle Paul, as he's writing to this young pastor Timothy, he mentions... The reprobates. He refers to in verse number 8, he says, Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. If you're a student of the Bible, the two men that he refers to, Janus and Jambres, who withstood Moses, uh, they're the ones that when Moses told Aaron to throw his staff down and and the rod of uh, uh, Moses turned into a serpent. Jam Janus and Jambres are the ones Pharaoh had uh, that were magicians, threw their staffs down. They became serpents. Uh, and Pharaoh wasn't impressed with Moses' serpent until Moses' serpent swallowed up the other two serpents. They withstood Moses. They did not believe what Moses stood for. They did not believe the truth that Moses came to proclaim. They did not believe in the God of Moses. Uh, and here Paul says that these men that are withstanding Timothy and causing harm in the church uh, there at Ephesus, they were just like those men. Uh, he said they were of corrupt minds. Uh, they were reprobates. Uh, that word reprobate means tested out worthless. Uh, 
My dear friends, uh, it says when they were tested uh, uh, concerning the things of God, uh, there was nothing of redeeming value within them. They were worthless. Uh, the worst thing that could ever be said of anybody is that they're called a reprobate. Hmm? The Bible talks about reprobates concerning the faith, worthless concerning the faith of God. Paul is dealing and helping to instruct Timothy about these reprobates. I've had the privilege of training several young men in the ministry, and uh, it amazes me. Every young preacher thinks they're going to be the next, uh, 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 you know, Billy Graham or the next uh, Billy Sunday or the next Billy Billy Goat or somebody. They think they're going to turn the world upside down. Uh, Every one of them is wet behind the ears. They got zeal, but not according to knowledge, as the Bible says. Uh, they think they know it all, and you can put all their knowledge in a thimble. Uh, but hey, you like their incitement, you like their enthusiasm. Uh, you try to instruct them, you try to tell them about uh, what they're going to face out there in the big bad world. Uh, but oh, they got all the answers. Kind of like your teenagers uh, 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 when they think they know more than mom and dad and all. You'll find out. Uh, uh, but uh, hey, it's amazing. Once they get out there, then you got to really sit them down and say, now this is why that's happening to you. There are a lot of reprobates in this world. Not everybody claims to be a Christian is a Christian. Not everybody claims to be for you is for you. So he deals with reprobates. I want you to notice also Paul uh, deals with his own reputation. Look at what Paul says. This is the testimony of Paul, verse 10. He says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. Paul said, I taught you everything that I believe. He said, you've known my manner of life. You've known my purpose. You've known my faith, my long-suffering, my charity, my patience. Well, that's all good stuff. But look at verse 11. But also my persecutions. Paul was stoned several times, left for dead. He was beaten three times with four, uh, 39 stripes. He was imprisoned. Locked up. I mean, you you wouldn't think that any of God's uh, preachers would have to go through any of that. Paul went through all of them. He said, you know my persecutions. You know my afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured. You see, back in chapter 2, he told Timothy, he says, uh, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And he goes on, verse 3, that Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Can I say, sometimes being saved isn't about shouting the glory and the victory and all that. Sometimes you just got to endure. Sometimes you just got to face some hard things. He said, you know that what I've endured. And then he goes on to say this. He says, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Hmm? Aren't you glad the Lord doesn't just bring something to your life? He brings you through it. It might not be a joyful thing while you're going through it, but hallelujah, He delivers you from them all. Huh? Psalmist said, I cried unto the Lord, He heard me and delivered me out of all my distresses. Well, that's the Lord. We see Paul's reputation. We see the reprobates. But then notice the reality. This was reality in Paul's day. It's the reality in our day. Look with me in verse number 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus might. Is that what your Bible says? No. Shall suffer persecution. Let me just stop right there. How many of you be honest tonight and say that your family members have looked at you different because you go to church all the time. Can I say, it's one thing if the world talks bad about you, but it hurts when your family talks about you. Hmm? If truth be told, there are people who lose promotion on jobs because you come to this church. Truth be told, there are some of you that don't get raises because you love Jesus Christ. You're not invited to places where other people are gathered because you're goody two-shoes. You will face persecution if you have a testimony for the Lord. There are going to be people who don't like you. There are going to be people who, who, who lie about you. 
You know, you can defend everything but a lie. Because when you try to defend yourself against a lie, they think you're making it up just to cover up for the lie. Hmm? Listen, I'm not here to give any pity parties. If you walk in my shoes, you know how many times I've been lied on? Lord, have mercy. I've had other preachers talk about me, said, I don't use King James Bible. Hogwash, we got it in the carpet. Huh? I mean, people just lie. Now, I can stand here and, and, and put on my Superman cape and tell you, hey, big boy, that doesn't bother me. But deep down inside, sometimes it bothers you. Hmm? I don't mind people talking about me. I do mind people lying about me. Hmm? So, you can live for God. You're going to face some things. Now, Joe Osteen's not going to tell you that. He's going to tell you every day's a Friday. You're never going to have any problems. Give God a dollar. He's going to give you $10,000. I mean, he's going to tell you everything. When you get saved, you hit the lottery. He's going to tell you all kinds of stuff. He's a liar. He's a false prophet. You've heard me say this. The Lord never promised you a rose garden. He just promised to be the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. You may go through a valley, but you'll find him precious in the valley. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he'll uphold you. Now look at verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now Paul said that 2,000 years ago. That evil men, seducers, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It should not amaze you, although it absolutely amazes me, of all the corruption that goes on in this world. And how people do wicked things, covered up, and think they get away with it. And in many cases in today's society, they do. Mm. But Paul said they're going to wax worse and worse. They're going to deceive and they're going to be deceived. And can I say, in this day and age, it amazes me how many of God's people are deceived because they don't believe this book. People believe a lie before they believe the truth. Now go with me to Psalms chapter number 12. The book of Psalms chapter number 12. I don't know how many times I've read this psalm over the years. I don't know how many times I've quoted verse 1 to the Lord. But I don't think it's ever been more prevalent than it is today. Psalms 12 says this. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. We live in a day and age, friend, where it's getting harder and harder to find godly people. It amazes me that in my lifetime I can remember where a contract was made by handshake. I can remember those days. Hmm? I can remember entering into contracts with people through a handshake. Nowadays, just the corruption you hear of people that call themselves preachers blows my mind. Now look in chapter 11 of Psalms. The Bible says this, In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily or privately shoot at the upright in heart. Now, friends, you mark her down. Remember what I read to you out of Second Timothy. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Now, you, you listen to me. I appreciate you referencing that m message that I preached about what if God blesses you with tomorrow, what you're thankful for today. Thankful somebody was listening that night. 
There's a lot of times I preach and you don't pay attention. I I've, I've preach in the old building. I preach against the perils of Harry Potter, and parents still let their kids read that stuff, and they wonder why the kids aren't in church today. Mm -mm. You just think Brother Doug's an old fuddy duddy. I preach against Facebook, and you don't believe me. And then I have Brother Wheeler preach against you know Brother Greg, Brother Wheeler. Tell you, you still don't believe me. All right, but listen to me. We're living and getting ready to enter a day in America where if you live by that Bible. There's going to be wicked man with arrows pointed at you to shoot at you. Mm -mm. They're coming to take you and I down. They're going to do everything in their power to silence us. Take heart, my dear brother. The Bible says, For the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. The church isn't going down, she's going up, brother. Huh? Now look in verse number 3. This is where I want to preach tonight of chapter 11. The Bible says this, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Can I say, it's been going on for generations, but it's come to a head in the last week that there have been foundations that are being eroded right before our eyes. Can I say the foundations of our freedoms are being destroyed as Americans? They're being destroyed right before us. Uh, in the last year, the left has shut down businesses. The left has shut down churches, calling them non-essential. The left has shut down schools. Uh, 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 have they given you your tax dollars back that you're paying for your schools? No, but they shut down your schools. Uh, 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 the left has shut down uh, all visiting to hospitals and nursing homes. Uh, uh, there have been people who have grieved and had loved ones pass away. They couldn't even go and have closure with them in their last moments uh, because the left have shut those places down. Uh, uh, the left has shut down funerals and funeral homes uh, and funeral services. Uh, 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 even last year there was a point uh, where you couldn't even have a graveside service out in open air uh, saying goodbye to you loved ones. Uh, hey, uh, uh, the left has even uh, 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 tried to and is pushing for a travel ban uh, where you can't even go on vacation anymore. Your freedoms are being eroded in America. Uh, the day of you claiming to be an American and doing what you uh, believe you have liberty to do, those days are over, friend. Not only uh, 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 have they done that in the last year, in the last year uh, uh, the left is forcing face mask wearing. You gotta wear a mask. Uh, I always thought a diaper went on the other end, but that's another thought. Uh, 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 they're forcing social distancing, and I brought it out in our study on Wednesday nights. Uh, the reason being, uh, 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 if you get the vaccine and it has the chip in it, uh, if you're close to somebody, it can't determine which one is which. Uh, 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 so they want you to stay six foot apart, so they know where you are at all times. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, 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 they're also uh, 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 requiring proof that you're not sick uh, in order to get on an airplane, uh, in order to go to work, uh, in order to go to school, uh, in order to do it, you're going to have to provide proof uh, that you are not sick, uh, and they're going to mandate, uh, mark her down, now it's voluntary, but there's coming a point uh, where they're going to mandate, you got to take a vaccine so they can keep you under control. Your freedoms are being eroded. I thought it used to in America, you had a choice whether or not you wanted a flu shot. You had a choice whether or not you wanted to be vaccinated. You had a choice whether or not you wanted to take medicine or vitamins and all that. Not anymore. The mm. mm. state of New York is advocating that if people get sick, they can put them in a camp. Yeah. Back in World War II, they called them concentration camps. Mm. Can I say this? Uh, I'm talking about the foundation of our freedoms are being eroded. Uh, 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 even in the last 72 hours, we're finding that they are censuring private citizens. My wife has a dear aunt, Aunt Karen. She's a sweet lady. She's a godly lady. She loves Jesus, and she's a staunch uh, uh, UK fan, and she is a staunch Donald Trump fan. She had the sorry, no good, tyrannic audacity to post something Trump said the other night, and Facebook censured her. Little old Aunt Karen. She's a real threat to America now. Mm. They're censuring private citizens. 
And conservatives all over the country are saying that they are losing tens of thousands of followers every single day. They are purging who you can listen to and who you can put your confidence in. Hmm? Can I say uh, 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 they are uh, con- uh, uh, purging viewpoints of conservatives? Do you realize as we sit here right now, conservatives have no voice outside of a pulpit? Hmm? The media is not going to give any kind of conservative viewpoint. Facebook has shut down conservatives. Twitter has. Uh, and uh, Dan Borgino over the summer started his own uh, 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 platform called Parlor. Uh, and you could go on Parlor and they never censure you over any viewpoints you have. Uh, but yet, even this weekend, Apple said they'll delete the app and Amazon did it. And right now tonight at midnight, Parlor's going down. And to make things worse... The leader of the free world, the President of the United States, is not able to communicate with his constituents. They are calling to impeach him so he'll never be able to run for office again, but to also boot him out ten days early so he will not deliver the dirt that they're all guilty of. And if he did, who would hear about it? If the foundations be destroyed, the foundations of your freedoms are being destroyed. George W. Bush, who was not a patriot, signed the Patriot Act and started eroding your freedoms. And can I say, 20 years later, Congress is doing the rest of the job. We're facing the beginning of the end, friend. I've told you, in order for the Antichrist to take over, America has to fall. And America's going to fall. And you say, Preacher, how can you say that? Because everywhere you study prophecy and study scripture, there is no mention of the United States of America. The best you can get is it talks about in Ezekiel that there is a whelp of a lion. Lion being England. Uh, and what's the countries that came off of England? That's the U.S., but she's no major player in prophecy. America's going to fall. Good news is the church is out of here for the Antichrist takes over, but that doesn't mean the church is out of here for America falls. The foundations be destroyed. There's an attack on the foundations of our freedom. Can I say there's an attack on the foundation of our founders? You realize those men in Philadelphia that pinned down the greatest document outside your King James Bible that the world has ever known, the Constitution of the United States of America, put safeguards in that Constitution so that tyrants could not overthrow America. But yet, in the last week, we've seen it happen. And I say, they have attacked the greatest document our nation is founded on, the Constitution. In so doing, they have thumbed their nose up at our founders, and they have disgraced everything that America has made America great. They have attacked the Constitution. Now, that may not mean much to you, but that is our right. That is our liberty. As far as a Christian, that is our Bible. Do you realize our founders came here? They fled America, or fled England to come here uh, to establish a nation that is based upon the principles and teachings and oracles of your Bible. Uh, and they framed it in a document called the Constitution of the United States of America. And our founders, uh, there's been assault uh, on free and fair elections. America was set up to be a democracy where the people decided who would rule over them, uh, where tyrants and dictators did not rule in America. Hey, uh, uh, the original colonies wanted to make George Washington a king. Uh, He said, I will not be king. Uh, And he made certain that there would be free and fair elections. Uh, And on November the 3rd, uh, 2020, that was thrown out the door. Uh, There has been a diabolical coup uh, uh, to overthrow the presidency of the United States of America for the first time that we know of. Uh, Your vote did not matter. Uh, It was predetermined who would have the White House and his name would not be Donald J. Trump. Uh, 
They have attacked your free and fair elections. They are attacking the First Amendment of the Constitution. That may not mean much to you, but it's under the First Amendment that we have, my dear friends, the free right to assemble and to worship God as dictated by the Bible. And they're trying to do away with the First Amendment. Hey, if time goes on, there'll be National Guardsmen standing at our door, locking the doors and say that you cannot enter the house of God. You cannot worship God. You cannot proclaim the Bible as it is. Bill Clinton tried to make the Bible hate book because the Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination. I can't help it that he leaned that way. The Bible's against it, my dear friends. By the way, Jeffrey Epstein had, Ob uh, had Clinton over on his island uh, and there are pictures that have come forth of, uh, of Bill Clinton in a dress. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's about as queer as it gets from where I came from. Yeah. Men are to be men and women are to be women. Yeah, right. They're trying to eradicate your First Amendment rights. Yeah. Huh? You remember when the health department called me last year? said the governor said you got to shut down I said does the governor know what the first amendment is he said well I reckon I said do you know he stuttered so I told him he said what is all that about well the courts lower courts federal courts and supreme court has told our governor that the first amendment says we can do this but now we have a congress that's going to be democratic house democratic senate Democratic presidency and they'll rewrite the First Amendment. You watch and see. Not only your First Amendment, your Second Amendment. A pastor friend of mine, an old man of God told me, preacher, next time they come and they ignore the First Amendment, remind them what the Second Amendment says. We have a right to bear arms, not so we can stockpile them, so we can defend our nation against tyranny. Uh, my dear friends, there's been a call for 1776 again. Uh, uh, there's a call for Americans to stand up and fight for our country. My dear friends, they'll be coming for that next. They can't overthrow you if they can't seize your weapons. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the foundations of our founders are being eroded, eradicated. Can I say this? The very democracy we stand for will not be for the red, white, and blue anymore. It'll be for the red and yellow. You can go figure that out yourself. Can I say there's an attack on the foundation of our freedoms? Our founders but also the attack on the foundation of our future. With what is going in to run this country for at least the next two years, they'll spend more money than this country has ever even fathomed to be done. Joe Biden said that his health care initiative would go in. His health care initiative alone is $100 trillion. They have signed off on the new green deal. They're going to hug every tree. They're going to do away with fossil fuels. Every vehicle will have to be electric. You'll not be able to have gasoline anymore because it's wicked, it's evil. Have you noticed the gas price has already raised? It went up a quarter in a week. You can say goodbye to them $2 gallon gas fill-ups. You better get a lot of Kroger points because we're going back to 4 and $5. Biden under Obama said that he wants uh, gas prices to be in comparison with those in Europe. And Europe right now is paying about $8, $10 a gallon. Talk to Naj how much fuel is down there in St. Lucia. They sell it by the liter down there, not by the gallon, and it's not cheap. You say, why? Because they don't want you using your vehicles anymore. They want to, to dictate to you uh, uh, how you're to live from now on. You're going to live a clean energy life. Everybody's going to have to get solar panels, generators, and mark her down. You're going to have to have your windmill because coal is bad. Coal brings electricity. The debt of America is going to go through the roof. There's no way that we can sustain what they are asking for us to pay for. Because you know who pays for it? The middle class. 
But you see, they're going to do away with the middle class. That's what they did in this trial period. They shut businesses down. Well, who's going to pay for it? The Antichrist. Hmm? When I say America is no longer being a sovereign nation, we're going to fall into a global nation. Obama and Hillary Clinton both advocated for it. Donald Trump uh, ended it. We're going right back to it. America used to base their decisions on the world court, not on the Constitution. Mark her down. We're going to be part of the global network. Uh, uh, Biden's already said he's going to enter back into the Iran deal. He's going to enter back into the deals with China. He's going to go back to what we were, which is uh, what George W. Bush uh, 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 was uh, enforcing. It is a global society. Sounds like the Antichrist to me. So the foundations of our freedoms, our founders, and our futures, are being destroyed. Now the scriptures say, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I've already preached longer than I'm going to preach, but I'm going to give you a couple little thoughts on this. What can we do? What can we do? I talk to people and people are just, and I'm the same way, I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of reading about it. I'm tired of thinking about it. I'm tired of trying to figure some sense in it. People say, well, what in the world can I do? What can we do? I mean, the Bible said, foundation be destroyed. What can the righteous do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I'll say this. I'm going to praise the Lord anyway. Huh? He's worthy of our praise. He's great. He's on the throne. Uh, and he's worthy to be exalted. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, 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 if it comes to a point we got to meet in somebody's basement, uh, if it comes to a point we got to meet in a barn, uh, if it comes to a point uh, 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 we uh, uh, got to meet in a group here and a group there, uh, he's still worthy to be praised because of all the great services we've had in here. Uh, he's worthy uh, because that day I was lost in sin. Uh, he came to where I was. Uh, that day I called on him. He saved me. Uh, hey, I'm just going to praise him anyway. Uh, it it don't matter who's in the White House. Uh, who It matters who's on the throne. Uh, and his name is Jesus. Uh, he's Lord of Lords. Uh, King of Kings. Uh, and again, the church ain't going down. She's uh, going up, brother. Uh, hey, this thing's are winding down. Uh, and then we're headed out of here. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him anyway. Huh? Say, what are you going to do? I'm going to preach the word anyway. Say, preacher, what if they throw you in jail? I used to tell my mama, I said, time comes. Uh, 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 Mom, you're going to have to visit me in jail. I'm not backing up on what that Bible says. Uh, and listen, uh, we're getting closer and closer. Uh, say, preacher, what are you going to do if they put you in jail? I'm going to do the same thing Paul did, uh, Peter did, uh, Silas did. I'll preach them guys down there at the jail. Uh, hey, I'm just going to preach the Word of God anyway, uh, regardless what goes on. Uh, Say, preacher, what can we do? I'm going to pray anyway. Right. You know, they made a law to, and told Daniel he wasn't allowed to pray. Yeah. Say, what he did? He prayed three times a day, morning, noon, and night. He prayed anyway. Yeah. Say, where did he get him? Caught him the lion's den. Yeah. By the way, he literally went to the lion's den. They threw him in there, probably didn't feed them lions for about four days. Uh, and they probably put a little salt and pepper on him when they threw him in. Uh, and them lions were thinking, oh, we're having Jew boy tonight. Uh, well, Daniel said the Lord had sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth. Uh, I believe old Daniel went to sleep on one of them uh, uh, big old cats laying next to him, uh, uh, purring in the middle of the night. I uh, uh, just rocked him to sleep. Uh, uh, old King Darius came down and said, uh, Oh, Daniel, is your king able to deliver you? Is your God able to deliver you? Uh, he said, Oh, king, live forever. Uh, my God sent an angel. Uh, shut the lines then. There is no hurt. Uh, hey, I'm just going to pray anyway. Uh, it don't matter what this world says. Uh, hey, the greatest force in this world uh, is the power of prayer and God is able uh, I'm just going to pray anyway uh, what are you going to do preacher I'm just going to present the gospel anyway uh, people are dying and going to hell this world's going to hell uh, they can surpass all the green deals they want try to save mother earth all they want to I've read where Peter says she's going to melt with a fervent heat yeah there's going to be some global warming uh, God's going to burn her up on these days uh, but people need to hear the good news of Christ they don't have to die and go to hell 
There is hope, and His name is Jesus. Preacher, what are you going to do? Foundations be destroyed. I'm going to pester the devil anyway. Huh? Hey, Genesis 3.15 is the first prophecy Jesus was coming. When the serpent beguiled Eve and her and Adam ate of the fruit, the Lord commanded Genesis 3.15, told that serpent, told Satan. He said, I'm sending a son. He said, you'll bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. Huh? On Calvary, the Son of God bruised the head of Satan. On resurrection morning, the Son of God bruised the head of Satan. Every now and then, God lets us overcome some affliction, overcome some uh, persecution. Over you know what it does? It bruises the head of Satan. I'm just going to pester him anyway. Huh? I preached years ago. Some of you remember, are you in the devil's bullseye? Sometimes he thinks he's got you right in sight. But he doesn't know his sights aren't controlled by him. Uh, he can only do what the Lord lets him do. And there ain't no telling how many times he's wanted to shut us up, want to shut us down. He tried to last year. I'm just going to pester him anyway. Mm -mm. Uh, just think about it. All the time the devil spends on messing with you, that gives somebody else a break. Hmm? That gives somebody else a little time to get help. So if the devil's messing with you, God may be just letting you take some heat so somebody else can get by. Hmm? I'm just going to pester him anyway. Say, preacher, the foundations are destroyed. What are you going to do? I'm going to prevail anyway. I've read the back of the book. We win. Now you hear me and hear me well. I refuse to live my life as a victim knowing I'm already the victor. Hmm? I'm not going to sit around and be depressed because who's in the White House? I'm going to live in victory because that night Jesus saved me. Uh, thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, I'm not going to play victim. Hmm? I'm not going to be all worried and upset and fretting and all that kind of stuff. All it does give you an ulcer. I'm going to enjoy the goodness of God and the reality is, none of us are promised tomorrow anyway. Hmm? The preacher, how bad is it going to get? I don't know. But I know one thing. David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Hmm? Uh, I tell you, we can go through history, and we can go through church history, and see some dark days come against God's people. What can I say? God delivered them out of them all. The preacher, what if, what if, what if it cost you your life? Well, don't threaten me with heaven. It ain't going to cost me anything. I died the third Saturday night of March in 1974. I started living that night, and I'll never die again. See, if you're only born once, you're going to die twice. You're going to die a natural death, and then you're going to die a spiritual death forever in hell. But if you're born again, you're born twice, you only die once. And that happened when you died out to sin. Because I have everlasting life. Oh, I know what you're saying. This old body of clay may be put in the ground. But hey, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I really just start living then. Hmm? I'm just going to serve the Lord anyway, friends. That's all I know to do. Uh, let me help you something. We made it through the Obama years. We made it through the Clinton years. We made it through the Bush years. Uh, are you listening? We made it through Jimmy Carter, hallelujah. Good guy, terrible president. Uh, oh, he's a liberal, but I mean he was a good guy. Terrible president. We made it through Gerald Ford. We made it, well, I'm talking we, I'm talking about people my age. We made it through Nixon. We made it through Johnson. We made it through JFK. We made it through all that because us making it has nothing to do with who's running this thing. Us making it is determined who's running the whole thing. And by the way, the Bible makes it clear that it's God that puts kings in positions of authority. You think all this happened caught God by surprise? And by the way, he's God, nothing's impossible with him.
Trump could call forth the Insurrection Act and, and declare martial law and put them all out. I don't know that he'll do it. Why should he? I mean, all he's de dealt with, for, I mean, he's a billionaire. Why in the world would he want to put his family through four more years of what he's went through? I don't know. But listen, it don't matter. God's in control. He's got it under control. It would be a good day in your life and you figure that out. I heard a preacher say this back in October. I didn't like it when he said it. I really didn't. I didn't like it. It was true, but I didn't like it. He said he'd rather have Obama, I mean Biden, same thing. He'd rather have Biden become president and the church have revival than Donald Trump become president and the church stay the same. I didn't like that statement because I didn't want Biden president. But if that's what it takes for the church to have revival, even so thy will be done, O Lord. See, I've studied that book of Acts, and I've studied throughout Bible history, and you know what the church has always done in adversity? Grown. She's always flourished in adversity. Just kind of like them cutting off Trump from all of his constituents. Do you know his approval rating has rised in the last three days? If he'd learned a long time ago just keep his mouth shut, he'd been real popular. Quit ticking people off with them tweets. Can I say? The more the devil punches and throws at the church, the stronger and the greater the church becomes. Now, if the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? My aunt and you sing his song. Miss Annette and I used to sing it. It's called Going Back. It talked about there comes a time when you're going to be in or out. You see, I'm no fool, Brother Donald. I, I don't know all the Bible, but I've read the Bible. And the Bible makes it clear that the Lord's coming back for a church without spot, without blemish. It might just be the Lord's going to purge the church so you can see who's real and who's not real. You see those that lay out and stay in their fuzzy slippers and refuse to be faithful. If they've got to suffer persecution to come to church, you can count that crowd out. But that crowd that says, come hell or high water, I'm going to put Jesus first, they're going to get stronger. And see, when your faith is tested and you are shown to be real, you inspire other people. Why do you think we like movies like Rudy? And if, that, if that movie don't want to jack you up and put a football helmet and go hit something, I don't know what will. It's inspirational. I don't know, have you seen that one movie it's about some guy from, I don't know, over England or something who wanted to be one of these downhill ski jumper guys? But he didn't know how to do it. But he decided he was going to do it. He'd, he'd go off and fly and, and wreck his body off the side of the mountain. And everybody laughed at him. He went on to win a medal in the Olympics. Eddie the Eagle is the title of the movie. That doesn't make me want to get on a set of skis, but it does inspire you, huh? <laughs> there are people who have overcome physical ability, mental abilities, all kinds of things to go on and do great things, and it inspires those around them. When you are tested for your faith and you come forth as gold, it inspires those around you. They no longer will talk about you for going to church. They will see why you go to church. Because what you have is real. And if there's anything that ought to be said of us, it's that we're real. And it may come down to where God's going to prove those who are real and those who aren't. God help us. I'm just going to live for Jesus anyway. That's all I know to do. Been doing it 47 years. He's never failed me. He's never let me down. Uh, there have been a lot of times you'd think we're going under and all we do is rise to the top. Cream always rises to the top, friend. Huh? God's good all the time. And I'm just going to live for him anyway. I wonder, how about you? Does what you have 
propel you to overcome any adversity you may, may be thrown at you? You may not know the answer to that question until you're in the midst of adversity. But do you know the Lord? Are you willing to sell out and serve him? See, can I help you with something? Paul and Silas didn't decide that night in the Philippian jail they was going to serve God. They made up their mind long before they'd ever stood before that council and then was beaten. So you need to make up your mind tonight what side you're on. Moses told that crowd that was uh, complained about him, he said, who's on the Lord's side among you? Sometimes you just got to make up your mind. Joshua said, you can go serve whoever you want to, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hmm? You need to make up your mind so that when trouble comes, that decision's already been made. I wonder tonight, what are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Foundations are being destroyed. What are you going to do? The choice is yours. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Or Brother Ray, somebody get a song. You need to make up your mind whose side, John. Here tonight, you don't know the Lord. Why don't you come? We'd love to introduce you to him. You're here and you're saved, you need to make up your mind. What are you going to do? You know, all the odds are stacked against us. That's when God shines the brightest, by the way. They didn't give David much of a chance against Goliath. The Lord always wins. I'll just hang out with him. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, our flesh doesn't like some of the corruption we see, some of the changes we see, some of the wickedness we see. But Lord, again, it doesn't catch you by surprise. You told us through the Apostle Paul when he spoke to Timothy. Things would wax worse and worse. Even though our flesh don't like it, Lord, our soul sure is comforted in that we know you. But Father, as you told us through Paul in Ephesians 6, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Help us put on the whole armor of God. Help us to stand for righteousness, for your glory, for your honor. Help your people. Even though they may be tried as gold that perisheth, but the trial of their faith may propel them to show folks they're real. Now, Father, there may be some here tonight struggling. I pray you'd strengthen them. There may be some here tonight, Lord, their faith is weak. I pray that you would increase their faith. There may be here some tonight, Lord, they're already facing adversity and persecution. I pray, Lord, you would help them, you'd bless them, you'd strengthen them. And then, Father, there may be some here tonight that doesn't even know you. I pray they'd come to trust in you, Lord, so they can have that peace and that joy that this world will never be able to give them and have eternal life when this life is over. Father, have your way in this invitation. Lord, we'll bless you for what you do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.